Hi, welcome back and we are now on episode two of Watercolour for Beginners and today we are going to assume that you've got some watercolour kit now and we're going to see what happens when we take brush, paint, paper and water, put them all together. Now if you're wondering who this wild haired banshee is, uh, I just need you to know that my hair has a bit of a mind of its own and it'll probably look pretty different episode to episode. Um, but yeah, it's still me, we're still learning watercolours and we're going to make a start. Okay, today we're going to be painting with the size 4 brush, the rounded point brush, my favourite. Um, oh, do you like my nails by the way? I'm making an effort now I'm on camera. Um, so we always start with a wet brush because that just allows the brush to form a nice rounded point. Now the paints I'm using are actually untouched from the last video I did and I just wanted to show to you that even though these paints were in a tube whilst left out they dry and then they can very easily be woken up again so what I've just been doing is getting a little bit of water on the brush and dabbing it into the paint and I'm waking it up and that colour is already becoming lovely and vibrant now when we use watercolour paint I will refer to it in a series of sort of concentrations I suppose but the most important thing is that it's always got a really decent amount of water in it so right now we're going to get our brush really nicely coated in that paper in that paper what am I talking about in that paint and now we are going to paint a polo mint circle on the page Oh, there we go. That's exciting. Putting a bit of paint to paper at last. So what we can see from here is we've got a lovely, smooth, full circle. There's no kind of drying out or sputtering out of the colour of the brush because the brush was nice and wet in the first place. Now, this is not the most exciting. It's what we call dry on dry because the paper is dry. And in terms of watercolour, that paint is dry. It's pretty, pretty sort of bog standard, not got tons of water on it. Nothing's going anywhere, is it? It's really staying put. Now, if I clean my brush off completely, so when I clean my brush off and I really want to get rid of any more colour on the brush, I sort of uh, squish the bristles up against the rim of the jar and then I'll also blot it out on the kitchen roll. But move my brush out of the way there we go so I've got a really nice clean wet brush now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wetness from this brush alone to fill in the circle of this little polo mint here and you can see in just a few brush strokes I've managed to draw in the pigment that was already there on the page and fill in that circle and you could keep going a little bit more to just fill it in even further there we go now, I had let that dry a little bit from jabbering onto you lot, but actually, even just by waking it up again with a little bit of water, we've managed to draw all that colour in and fill in the circle. And this is the beauty of watercolour. So this is what we call wet on dry because the water is really now allowing the paint to move, but the page is still dry, so those edges are holding in the paint, it's going nowhere. Let's do the third basic of watercolour. So clean wet brush, let's blot it out again, make sure there's no colour, lovely, okay. Now this might be a little bit tricky to see, but we're now gonna create a wet patch on the page. And we're going to do wet on wet. So I've just gone back into the water jar once again and I'm really loading this page with water. So I've done it about three times and I've made a square it's maybe just a bit bigger than an inch square, three to four centimetres. Right, lovely and wet. Now working fairly quickly, I'm going to go back into my palette and I'm going to paint that same polo mint circle. And let's just watch what happens. Ooh, satisfying. Wow. Now it is so tempting to try and poke about and sort of try and control I suppose is the best way to say try and control the paint on the wet page but the beauty of watercolour is that it does 
things that the human hand could never dream of doing with the paintbrush. So you've just got to let it go and you've got to try your hardest not to poke about of it and just allow it to do its thing. Now, some of you might be painting along at home and it will look very different. Some of you may have a completely full coloured square of water and you're just like, what's going on? It's gone completely haywire. And some of you may have had a square with water and a circle that really didn't go very far at all. Now let's have a look at why that might be. Now it's all down to how much water you put on your brush. Now I'm going to sort of paint, oh it's quite easy now because the water is starting to be a bit more colourful. I'm going to paint a watery square but I'm not going to go back into my water jar for any more than just that first amount of water. So I filled it in with water but it's, it's not as wet as previously. So Let's see what happens when I add the red circle to that square. It's not going nearly as far as that, is it? And that is because we've got less water on the page. And so the water that's the vehicle for the paint to run across, it's just not as much there, is it? So we don't have as much, uh, much water to help us travel, really. So let's have a look at the third option where we're really waterlogging the page so I'm just gonna dollop water onto this and then let's see what happens oh my goodness that's a little bit crazy and you should be able to see from the side that we've just got a sort of standing puddle of water on our page and the water and the paint is actually barely reacting with the paper. It's just sort of floating around in the water. So I'd recommend having a little go, experimenting with how much water you put on the page to see how far your paint travels. And somewhere in between is the happy medium where you get a nice bit of movement, but not so much that we need to uh, get the lifeboat out. So. The last thing we're going to look at today is how we get from this kind of bold colour up to these lovely pale tones without having a white paint because I think in other painting mediums we use white to lighten things. Well in watercolour we use water funnily enough. So the last exercise we're going to do today is we're going to get that red paint back on our brush and on a section of page that is dry always get my brush nice and wet whatever's happening we're going to paint another circle but this time I'm going to fill it in straight away okay now clean that brush off 100% maybe even blot it on the side there and even with our slightly colorful water this exercise is going to be really interesting to see what happens when you stretch out that pigment so we're going to do a circle of water and just watch as that paint from the first circle starts to flood into the next one. Clean the brush off, we're going to do another one and each time this wet circle just overlaps the first and just kisses the edge and you just see a little bit of wet pigment flooding in but getting paler and paler each time and I think we've got enough for one more. So one more clean wet circle, touching the edge, filled in the middle with water and gradually we will start to see the paint flood down. But you can see very quickly from that very very intense red up there, the more water we add the paler and paler it gets through to a lovely sort of blush colour right to a fairly invisible pale 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 pink. But what's really lovely is as it dries, we're starting to get a lovely crisp edge to our paint. So this is how we get to control the amount of light or dark in our watercolour, and that's by using the water. Now, one really handy tip for when you're painting with watercolour is, of course, your water is going to get colourful. And when we start mixing colours, it's going to start looking a bit like swamp water. So once your water is opaque, that you can't see through it anymore and it really does look like swamp water, it's time to change it up and it won't affect your colours too much. But that is 
the basics of watercolour. We've got dry on dry and wet on wet and somewhere in between we've got wet on dry. And there you go. Honestly, um, we could leave it there if you wanted. You could just go off and do your own thing now. You have got those basics of watercolour under your belt and that's really all it is. But if you're keen for more, there will be more. Um, but if you like what you've seen today, hit the like button. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, that's the best way to uh, make sure you don't miss an episode. And I must say from last time, it was so fantastic having your comments below the episode for me to think of new episode ideas and um, just to have your general comments. It's really nice to know you're all there. So again, if you've got anything to say, I'd love to hear it in the comments section below. Uh, happy painting!